And I, that's more conducive. Yeah. You know, this is more yeah. like you're living your life. Yeah, actually. You have to do it in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ashram facilitates that. The ashram facilitates that. That's why it's so nice. Yeah. So is there any way we could space out some of these chairs so we can all Yeah, you want to sit in the front? No, it's just... just. Can you see? I'll tell you what, John. Can't see, actually. As long as I'm sitting like this, I can see. Careful with the cable. Can you see that? I can move. Your back. Put your feet on the table. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you turn down the heat a little bit? Sorry? Turn down the heat a little bit? Ah, yes. No problem. Thank you. Well, I'm still. Put my head. Well, tell me where to move. Move back. Sure. Okay, we start with a few minutes of meditation. You just messed everybody up. Now. Uh, 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 Swaha tat savitur paranaya Parko tevashya tihimahi Devyonaha prasho shanti Shanti Shanti
Open your eyes slowly. So, I'm going to jump uh, because the mind is a long subject. Uh, so, I'm going to jump <coughs> to uh, I'm going to jump to a more practical thing uh, and the, one of the techniques that we teach it is a technique which is not kind of a manual technique like a preparatory manual technique it's a, it's a technique that Guruji explained in many different ways in many different satsangs and I decided to call this technique the good morning day technique <laughs> So basically, this is what we have to deal with each day of our life, which is a day only. You know, one of the things that, of why people suffer, is because they think that their memories are real, that they are what they have in their memory about themselves. But in fact, you are not that. Nobody knows that. Think about it. Do I know anything about your memories? Does your wife know what you have in your mind? No. So not, even, no not even your close ones know about it. They don't know about it and they don't care. They don't care about it because think about when you wake to that reality. You are only interested in your reality. You really don't think a second in what is the mind frame that John has woke up. Because you don't care. So nobody knows it. Nobody cares. So what kind of reality is that? <laughs> Your reality is based on your actions. You know, the only real reality you have is expressed in your actions throughout the day you have to live. That is your reality for me, for example. It is your actions that is for me your reality. So, <coughs> the the one of the things that you have Excuse to stress yeah. didn't they say isn't there like some statistic that like 90 percent of your memories are even false they're not even oh yeah i don't know the statistics but you know look at yourself i mean right. for example for example this is something you can do who has children here right uh, you know that they have grown up already you try and look for an instance of when they were 12 or 40 and ask them what they remember and you will see, I mean, it has nothing to do with what you remember. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same instance are you, and you, you did leave that instance together. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do, I mean, do the experiment. Right, family <laughs> education or whatever. Right. Your Memories that could be totally mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you wake up to your memories and you project these memories in the screen of your mind, you know, and you call this my reality, you know? And you have people there and you start speaking with people and all these things. So, one of the first things that people have to really understand is that life is only one day. Life is not their memories. That is not real. The only place where you can do something for your life or for, or for the life of your loved ones is during that day. And that doesn't mean that you don't have a direction. You have a direction in your life. I mean, uh, there are three 
Guruji used to say, sense, common sense, and nonsense. <laughs> Have you seen this set, Sam? Have you seen this satsang? I think I might have. Okay, this is a satsang I use in my preparatory class. So if we have time before 6, I will put it, because it's just a 15 minutes. Probably I have time. But it explains very well this. <coughs> but uh, let me explain it in my own words to begin with. Sense. Sense is the sense you give to your life. And the sense is the direction. In fact, in Spanish, sentido is dirección. ¿En qué sentido vas? ¿En qué dirección vas? So, <coughs> you are free to go in any direction. You know, it's like, it's like sailing a boat. You go north, northwest, or you go, I don't know, to these islands. So you go north, northwest. But the act of sailing is I know that I go north northwest, but today now the wind comes from here. So I put the sail here, I put the sail there, and after a while the wind comes here. So I change the sail here, I change the sail there. So what you need you, what you need to do is simply maintain the direction. So with respect of the future, you only need to have Create your own sense. What is the sense of your life? What is the direction of your life? I want to be multimillionaire. I want to have a big business. I want to be a good pa father. I want to be, you name it. You put your direction and then <coughs> one day after the other, keep that direction according to where the wind comes from. Right? So you only have one day to live life. And because the only thing you can do in life for yourself or for the people you love is what you can do in one day living life is very simple because one day is just 16 hours it starts and finishes and whatever the circumstances you are in say you are in a, in a bankruptcy uh, your marriage is being broken and you name it and then you project all that in the screen of your mind and you see it terrible. But that day, that day you only had to go to your lawyer to speak about <laughs> the thing or you had to go this, uh, you had to do that. And to sort one day is simple. And the only thing you can do is sort out your day. Right. So, how you learn to live a good day? you start from the very moment you wake up. From the very moment you wake up in your bed and you are, try tomorrow, and you are with your head in the pillow and you wake up, your mind will immediately start projecting into the screen of the mind all what you think is real. But in that very moment, that you realize that is happening, you have to consciously say, well, this is what I have in my mind, but this is the day I have to live. The light is coming through the... So you, from the first moment, you start saying, good morning day, and you tell mm -hmm. yourself, it's only today. You just need to do the best of it today and you start from the minute you wake up. Now, when you wake up in the mornings just after sleeping you are very intimate with yourself. It's the time of the day that you are more intimate to yourself. You are kind of near by yourself. By the way, it's important not to be lazy moving yourself out of bed. Because if you are lazy moving yourself out of bed, the mind starts screwing you more quickly. <laughs> so you want to, you know, wake up, realize that you are starting to project, and then say, okay, this is one day, the day I have to live, 
because if you stay in bed you start churning and churning mm -hmm. and then if you let that churning go in an hour and a half you are completely subject to that churning mm -hmm. and you, the, you know it just drags you along the day mm -hmm. and you end up the day completely tired and destroyed mm -hmm. <laughs> being dragged by that force you know so from the moment you wake up you realize that the only reality you have is the day you have to live not what you are imagining because what you are imagining has nothing to do with what is going to happen that day that you don't even know exactly well, you might know that you have to go to the office yeah, at night or, or, or to whatever you have to do, but you really, you know, it's, it's a new day, it's a new life for that respect, you know? So, you have one day to live, it's only that day, whatever you think is not necessary. People think that if they don't think about things, uh, they will not be able to take care of things, right, right. but it's, it's untrue. Okay. If that is like if you thought that in order to pick your car, you have to be in the shower saying, okay, I'm going to open the door with the right hand, yes. <laughs> and I, I do like this and I open, yeah, I sit down, okay, the brake is there and this is there, and you start calculating everything. If you know how to drive, when you are in front okay. of a car, you will know how to drive without, without even thinking about it. This means that whatever abilities you have, you arrive to that day with. Whatever abilities you have at quark, and whatever abilities you have that day that you have to live, you have them, you don't need to think about them. You will exercise them when needed. And the abilities that you don't have, you don't even worry because you're not going to be able to learn it in one day. <laughs> so, you just, you know, uh, realize that you have one day to live, you have just woken up, you are intimate with yourself, and you want the process that goes from the moment you wake up in bed to the moment you do your first meditation, which we advise it to be Tratak. You put yourself in the good morning mode, which means you consciously, and this technique, if you explain it to people, this technique for many people is more than enough to feel much more comfortable in their lives. You know, you take them a big way of their shoulders. Because most people think that they have to sort out the whole life in one day. And no, they only have to sort out the, the, the bread they have to buy in the bakery, the meeting they have with this, and that's the only thing you have to sort out. So from the moment you wake up, to the moment you do your first meditation, you put yourself in the good morning mood attitude, which means you consciously direct your, your eyes to everything beautiful that surrounds you. You know, you might have children, you might have a nice garden, you might have a nice house, you might have a nice bathroom. Everybody is surrounded by beauty. In fact, everything is beautiful. We see the beauty in the things we love. We don't see the beauty in the things we don't love. But doesn't mean that they are not beautiful, you know? And we all have this experience of being in love with someone and don't seeing any defect. You know, if you are in love with someone, you don't see any defect. You know, when you were in love with someone? Now stop loving him and let him sneeze at the wrong moment. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, you only see bad things. He's the same person, but before you loved him, now not. And so he's as beautiful as he was, but you are not loving him. You need to love something to see the beauty of something. You only see the beauty of a painting, for example, if you can love 
paint, if you love painting, if you love composition, if you love colors, if you love the expression through painting, and this applies to everything. <coughs> so you put yourself in the attitude that you consciously, instead of letting yourself be drawn to blah 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 blah, blah, blah all the things that come up in your mind. You just tell yourself, look, I mean, now I'm waking up and now I am, you know, preparing myself for the day. You allow yourself, you know, the time, since you wake up in the bed till you are showered uh, and everything and dressed, what it is, 30, 45 minutes, more or less? Yeah? More or less. Yeah? Uh, so, those 30, 45 minutes, it's an open presence practice. I mean, you keep yourself present and there is one thing very important here which is every action you perform for example cleaning your teeth or having a shower or dressing yourself every action you perform you have to consciously try, no, not consciously try, you have to consciously do the effort of stop looking for the result. You know, we think that we get satisfied with the result. In other words, you are cleaning your teeth and your mind is in having the clean, the tooth, the teeth clean. Or you are, whatever, dressing yourself and your mind is in finishing dressing. So, what you do is you change that, that attitude. And when you brush your teeth, you just forget about that you want to have your teeth brushed, you just brush your teeth and feel the, 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 the brush in the teeth and the smell. And you keep yourself like, like in the same way you go back to the mantra, you go back to the action. In the same way you go back to the action of repeating the chant, you know, your mind is thinking, but you draw it back to the action of repeating the chant mm -hmm. without wanting to finish the chant. It's just, I'm just doing the action. So in the same way, you just go back to the action, forget about you want to finish, and you clean your teeth. You let thoughts go. But if your mind is speaking with people, and normally we start early in the morning to speak with different people, these, these moments speak with God. Tell everything to God. Uh, each person has its idiosyncrasy to speak with God. But you know, one way that might be easy for you, if you have some devotion, is to tell it to Guru Raj. You know, whatever you are telling your mother or your daughter or your boss or your friend in your mental conversation, so you are having a shower and you find yourself in a mental conversation with your friend, simply say, Kuraj, I'm telling my friend, and you will see that most of those thoughts are just lies or manipulations or or projections of what you are not, you know that they are really completely irrelevant and that they in fact are creating kind of a, a, a cloud that doesn't allow you to see truth, to see the reality, to see all that beauty around you. So you keep, you know, if you have something to speak, tell it to God, if you have and put your attention in what you are doing and let thoughts go and in this mode, you, you know, you shave, you well shave, men shave, and you dress, and till you sit down to do your first meditation. Now, as, <coughs> as in the process of teaching to meditate, one of the things that we are going to teach, because it's one of the most powerful techniques, is Guru Shakti, you want to do this teaching of Guru Shakti very subtly, very little by little. So you start with this technique, which is, you know, and if you are an atheist, you speak, you know, you are going to speak with your imaginary mother, so you speak with an imaginary God, speak with that omniscient, omnipresent, 
omnipotent. Omnipresent means that speaks through everything. And this is a reality or an actuality. You know, everything speaks. Everything, the position of the shoes speaks about the person that left them there. Any photographer or artist or... <laughs> yeah, it's true. Ev about me. <laughs> everything, everything speaks. I mean, everything is alive. Everything speaks. And you know, many artists, you know, they, they make a picture of a table and how it was left and you know all the objects in that table are speaking you of what happened in the table in fact you know the csi uh, exactly. you know when they go to a crime scene they you know they 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 let all the things speak <laughs> of what happened there so it's everything is speaking so that consciousness speaks you from every place and in reality you can start establishing a friendly relationship with that ever-present consciousness which is the final or ultimate goal of Guru Shakti so you tell them, you, you teach them to whatever your mind is speaking if you cannot let go of the thought because it is worrying you you just tell it to God so in the process of waking up shaving yourself or showering and dressing you are in that mood you are discarding thoughts because if you find yourself speaking with someone you tell it to God and when you tell it to God if you are speaking to God it's because it is a thought that is worrying you it's something that is there that you cannot easily discard so you end up because if not you you, you are going to speak with God and you realize it was a lie and you don't lose the time no but if it is something that is there, that is worrying you, that is troublesome, it's a yearning, a frustration, a confusion, you name it, then it is a persistent thought and then, well, you just tell, you just tell God whatever you are confused about or you are frustrated about and you just tell him by, in the same way that your mind projects your mother or your brother, you project God. You project a God, an invented God. And then by the time you come and sit to meditate, what you can do is a prayer. You start with a prayer. Prayer is important. Guruji spoke a lot in his satsangs about prayer. And in fact he always said that prayer, meditation, contemplation, you know, and spiritual practices, it's all of the same thing. So how do you do a prayer in this case? Well, if that day, you know, if that day you are okay, you have, you know, you just enjoyed your shower and the warmth of the water and this and that, and you feel at peace with yourself and with your circumstances, well, that prayer could be just a grateful, you know, that a way to say thank you, no? But if you are confused or feeling frustrated or feeling some turmoil in the mind, then you can sit down and do a prayer. And how do you do a prayer? You do it in the following way. One, you speak mentally. And slowly. It's not like a prayer that you read. It's you tell God, speaking mentally, slowly, and listening to the sound of your voice inside your mind when it's speaking that prayer. Say, you say, Lord, I am confused because I don't know if to divorce or not. Say, no, that could be the case. So you, you, you say that slowly, listening to your voice inside your head when it is speaking, like in Yoga Nidra, you remember? So, like in Yoga Nidra, uh, uh, listen, and feeling what you feel <coughs> when you listen your voice speak what it's speaking, your voice inside your head. So, in about 
you have not to be too long. You try to be concrete. You know, like three, four, maximum five sentences. More or less. You have to take into consideration that, you know, God, God has to listen to a lot of people. So <laughs> <laughs> You know, I spent all morning with you. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> yeah, because time. Some people start. Some people. Some people start telling God things, and then twenty minutes. I mean, and then, then God, God gets bored and say, "Look, I mean, come on, I mean, concrete <laughs> So, you try to be concrete, you try to be concrete. Now, this is a way of being honest with yourself. Because what you are doing since you woke up, by being in front of God in every act, thinking in front of God, washing, brushing your teeth in front of God, showering in front of God, what you are doing in that is you are putting yourself in front of a good mirror, to look at yourself at the mirror squarely. If you don't do that, what happens, you know, when you start speaking with many people, what you are really is distorting what, who you are. You know, and the I that is speaking with your mother mentally, and the I that is speaking with your lover, lover mentally is completely different. In reality, you are projecting an eye for my mother, an eye for my daughter, an eye for my lover. You can relate with your experience, right? I mean, we all do this. So, uh, so it's a way to look yourself squarely in the mirror because, you know, you are speaking with God, which is, you know, uh, you don't need to create an identity. It's all the contrary. You, it's... So it's a good way to look yourself at the mirror. At the same time, you are, you are discarding a lot of thoughts because you will see immediately the mind starts to lie or, or exaggerate or complain or judge or you name it. So you discard all those thoughts and you are left with the thoughts that are there really bothering you and that might be uh, relevant to the day you have to live. Okay, so you do this prayer in three, four sentences, and once you finish the prayer, you add two, two, two extra things. One is you accept responsibility. So after you tell God, what is worrying you, you accept your responsibility that, like I said this morning, means you realize you are responsible of the day you have to live. It is you who walked every step to get to that day and you accept that you are able to respond to that, that, those circumstances. You know, you don't fall into the trick that I am, a, I am unable to deal with this. This is too much for me. It's, it's another typical attitude that human beings have, you know, I am unable. Yes, you are able, everybody is able. So, for, and the second thing, like in every prayer, you make your petition. What do you need from God? Now, atheists will, in any room, when I teach, and there are always atheists or agnostics or people that are allergic to the word God, they will immediately say, yes, but I don't believe in God. <laughs> uh, so whom, whom I am going to ask for something? I tell you, ah, you have never prayed and asked for, some, for something? I say, no, no, because I don't believe in God. So then you start asking them, do you buy lottery tickets, for example? Many people do, no? Yeah, and when you buy a lottery ticket and you say, <laughs> who are you asking? Who are you asking? I truly believe in God. Who are you asking for the lottery ticket to be drawn with your number? Who are you asking that? Well, asking to the same person. Yeah. <laughs> or when you are in love of someone and you say, Oh, I want her to love me. Who are you asking that? Well, you ask to that 
to whatever you ask it when you ask this kind of thing, same thing. The truth is that if you do this and you do it me in meditation, what you will find is that, is that the answers are there and they are there that day. Right. Mm -hmm. And they will come in many different ways. And they will many of the times not be the answer that you would have preferred to listen. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the right answer in any case. Eh? So, you do this with a petition, you know, and you ask whatever you think you need. You need strength, you need discrimination to make a decision, you need whatever. And then you do your pranayamas your tratak and you can finish your meditation before the second pranayamas with an affirmation an affirmation done in the way that we do the affirmation in the yoga nidra practice as you are coming to the yoga nidra practice different people will come different days right mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. It's on Wednesdays. But it's only uh, one, right? One time. No, this Wednesday, are all Wednesdays. All Wednesdays I know, but I mean one PM. Always one. one PM, right? Well, if, if you need that one Wednesday, we do it at another time, because one PM you cannot come, we can mm -hmm. do another Wednesday uh, at another time. You just coordinate with me, you know what oh, I mean. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, you know I have not to follow exactly the timetable, I can adjust. Yeah. Are these recording too? Uh, the Yoga Nidras, yes, we will record the Yoga Nidra. Now, the affirmation is made in the following way, just for you to know is, Again, like the prayer, speaking slowly, listening to the sound of your voice inside your head when it speaks what it speaks, affirms what it affirms, and feeling what you feel when you listen your inner voice saying what you say. Just let yourself feel what you feel, whatever it is, when you say what you say. And then affirmation has to be done with the verb to be in the present tense. So, an affirmation is like the negative, uh, the, neg the negative affirmations. For example, when you say, I'm stupid, or I'm a disaster, yeah. you don't need anybody to explain you. We know to do the negative part perfectly. <laughs> but then they tell us, do a positive affir affirmation, and people say things like, I am not going to be lazy, <laughs> which is a negation. <laughs> and in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no. Uh, I am diligent. <laughs> not I am not going to be lazy in the future. I am diligent. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, it is I am whatever, and then you use uh, another sentence using the gerund of feel, feeling, because you are going to feel what you feel when you listen to your voice. So, for example, you say, I am at peace, for example, and from this peace that I am feeling, I answer to my circumstances. For example, could be an affirmation. And the affirmation, you repeat it three times. One, two, and three. Slowly listening to your voice. And in the third affirmation, you recall in your mind the people that are part of your circumstances, and you, as you affirm it for yourself, you affirm it for all of them. So if you say, I am at peace, you somehow visualize your mother, your daughter, your boss, your friend, and you realize that your heart wants all of them to be at peace also. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you do the affirmation in, in that way, right? And you do these three affirmations, and then you do pranayamas, and you start your day. And try it. Try it. I promise you. You're going to go shocking. That in, eh? 
Don't you do group shock TFT? No, 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 no. no. Look, I mean, they, these people are learning. They, oh, I have not, right. I have not even spoken to them about any group. Right, I'm sorry. I, you know, I always have the picture of, of, of my master, and I explain people, oh, this is my master, mm -hmm. and you know, I normally will explain them also that I have his picture there in the same way that you ha can have the picture of your wife in your desk. You know, many people go to work, put the picture of the wife or the husband in the desk. Mm -hmm. So, and why you put it there? Because you love that person and you know it inspires you. So you are working and suddenly you look to your husband and you feel inspired. Well, the same, the I'm same. Right. The relationship with your <laughs> spiritual master is a loving relationship and it inspires me in the same way that you can have the pic and that's it and you finish all discussions <laughs> and you don't need to speak about gurus he is my spiritual master and the relationship with uh, with a spiritual master is a loving relationship like the one you can have with your wife or and that's it you don't need to tell anything else because what happens is that people i never teach guru shakti because people do it by themselves i just put everything together so that they naturally do Guru Shakti and they end up doing Guru Shakti. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They start speaking with God and after they've seen several tapes of Guru Raj and this, that, that, they start coming to you and say, can I do the good morning practice Is speaking to Guru Raj? And I tell them, yes, <laughs> but you don't need to tell them, they will do it naturally. So you don't create conflict, you know, it comes, it r mm -hmm. arises in them in a natural way, like it arose in you in a natural way. Mm -hmm. uh, so <coughs> you start the day like this, we will not have time for the, for the satsang uh, of Guru Raj, but I will put it tomorrow. And then you start the day. And your day, well, I will, I will leave the common sense and the nonsense and the sense for the satsang of Guru Raj tomorrow, because we only have 15 minutes left now. So once you start your day, your day is composed of your actions, of your thoughts, and of your feelings. The I acts does things. From the moment you wake up, it is the eye that showers, that dresses, that brushes the teeth, that does the breakfast, and you have the, the experience of I am putting myself a coffee, I am getting the car. So I, the eye is doing things. Mm -hmm. The eye is thinking things because I think this or think that or think the other, and you have that experience that it is the I thinks and then the I is feeling somehow you can feel happy frustrated confused uh, exultant but you are feeling somehow during 16 hours you are thinking during 16 hours you are acting during 16 hours you are feeling things and that is all that has to do with the I there is nothing else try to look for it so it's very simple. You just need to deal with your thoughts, with your feelings, and with your actions during 16 hours. You start by preparing yourself, you know, with the good morning day practice, prayer, the tracta, your mind is focused, your mind is ready. Already an hour has gone through, you only have 15 more to go, because eight of eight are, you are sleeping, you know? So, so it's, it's very simple. And then you have your actions. You know, every day you have actions to perform. Now, tell me, a normal adult, like any of you, how many actions during any day are actions that you have to perform yes or yes. You don't need to think about if I'm going to do it or not. For example, brushing your teeth or doing the food or eating or 
going to work or one thing worth doing this email or whatever. How many actions are actions that you have to perform yes or yes? Well, in reality, I don't have to do any of them. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that are automatic? A lot, a you lot know. are automatic. I mean, otherwise... You need to I go to the supermarket. Well, you don't have to do that. That's what I'm saying. Okay, third <laughs> That are automatic? Is Look, that what you I mean? mean? What I'm saying, yeah. how many actions know, of okay. each day you have to perform <laughs> yes or yes? Yeah, that you don't know. need to think about if I'm going to perform the action. For example, say you have children at school and you have to pick them up. You just pick them for given. Yeah. Yeah. You have to yeah. do it. Have to do. Say you have a job right. and you have to be at nine o'clock there. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to be there. Mm -hmm. Say that in that job mm -hmm. you do accounting. So you have eight hours of doing accounting, right or wrong. Right. Right. So I'm saying yeah. how many hours of those fifteen hours are actions that have you have to perform yes or yes that you know, you, you have to do them that day. That day, you know, any day, normal day. How many hours are actions that you have to do? Yes or yes? Like preparing the food or right. eating or having a shower, going to That's work. Right. So how many hours? The 60. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> From the 15 hours, you could say easily 12. Oh. 12 are our things that you have to do, yes or yes. So look how simple it is to live. Eh? You have of these 15 hours, only three missing, to see how we fill them, that you have to perform action, which is karma yoga, which is a yoga essential for householders, which we all mm -hmm. are. So, how, how, you have 15 hours of action, so I mean, you have, you have, most of the time, you have to perform action. How do you perform action, yogic action? What is the right action? Very simple. One thing you do, forget about the result. You know, when you are say, cooking the food for the children, mm -hmm. instead of peeling the <coughs> potatoes, thinking that you want the potatoes peeled and the meal done, peel the potatoes. Find the satisfaction in the action. Make the action an offering to God and give yourself completely to that action that you have to perform. Because you have to perform it, you have no choice. So. Can you do anything better if you give yourself the best of you in the action you are performing? You forget about the result. You just do it as an offering. You will also get naturally the best results. Because if every action you perform it like that, which is what the Buddhist called right action, then you know you are giving yourself in every action. So naturally you will obtain the best results. So look, and when you act like that, the action satisfies itself. So you know it's, it's like when you, say when you clean the house. Imagine that you do a big cleaning in the house. If your mind is, I want to finish, is in, I want the result, it will be very tiresome. Like you know, like if you go in a car to, Baltimore and your mind is Baltimore, Baltimore, when I'm going to get to Baltimore then the, the trip becomes very, very long. But if you just start cleaning and you know, just do it, you know, give yourself up and say, I'm going to clean this to perfection. I mean, and you will just flow through the action and the action will satisfy itself and you will have the cleanest of houses and the energy will be left there. So that is right action. You have 15 hours a day average of an adult that works to practice right action. It will be good for your employer if you are an employee. It will be good for your company if it is your own company. 
it will be good for everyone including to you because if you act like that you get the best results and you have not even thought about them because the secret of acting like that is forgetting about the result you want of the action you just try to find the satisfaction in the action itself act for the act for the act of acting and give yourself completely in that act and make that act an offering to, to the divine. So that is your offering to your life, that act you are doing. It's an action you have to perform, you don't need to think about it, you have to do it. Makes no sense complaining, oh, I don't want to do this. Makes no sense. And it's just a trick that your mind is playing with you. Just let that thought go and make that action into meditation. Does that relate to, you know, the term as they're all using mindfulness, like really being into what you're doing? Yeah, exactly. Mindfulness is what, yeah, uh, you know, it's right. the same concept. Yeah. I mean, all religions teach the same right. concept, you know. Yeah. Right. It's be, be here in the present yeah. moment, yeah. Be, exactly. be present, be here and now. Yeah. And, and, and forget about the result. Yeah. The mindfulness, mm -hmm. forget about this very important sentence. Forget about the result. But Guruji doesn't forget these things. The secret is, forget about the result. Yeah. Whilst your mind is expecting a result of the action, you will not be able to be in the action. Yeah. Yeah. When you say, I don't mind the result, but I love the action, then is when you act like that. Right? So, you start the day like this, you dedicate, so how do I introduce this to students? Well, you know, this comes in the third class uh, of, you know, so this Tuesday we, I will teach this to the students if you follow it. And I give them an exercise, you know, and you say each day from here, you know, I normally do it in eight weeks. Here as I am doing two per week because I'm only a, a month, right. but normally I would say for the next week, you know, choose um, a few actions every day uh, and you can, you know, either use uh, in your iPhone one of these mindfulness apps with, with, with a gong every hour and whatever it, when it sounds, whatever you are doing at that moment, you will be doing something, make it into a mindful action or karma yoga, I mean the name is the... Is the yeah. Not important. The important thing is the, the action itself. Or you can, you know, kind of planify and say, okay, so this week I'm going to do all the homework, all the, you know, like cleaning, I'm going to do it. And the next week I'm going to do every email like that and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You have to, habit uh, the mind is not habituated, you say. Mm -hmm. The mind is not habituated to act like this. Mm -hmm. The mind is habituated to ask, act looking for the result. So you need to rehabituate the mind, which is not easy, it requires effort, but in this case is quite easy because you get habituated to things that produce you satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And once you start acting like this, the mind realizes that I can clean the house in a very satisfying way, I can do the dishes in a very satisfying way, I can write these emails in a very satisfying way, and suddenly the mind finds that it is more satisfactory to, do th to act in that way, and then you will start naturally acting in that way. And you will start flowing through action, and you know, once you start flowing through action, the day becomes very easy. Yeah. Because you, the only thing you can do, and in the only way your real, what you are in reality for the rest of the world expresses is through your actions. In other words, a fireman expresses himself putting down fires, and, and a doctor operating, and you name it, and a dancer dancing. So. Get into a rhythm. Yeah. So you express yourself through the actions you perform, whatever they are. And 
you know, you, you, you give the best of yourself in your expression and that is what you really are, what you are doing through your actions with respect to other people, what you really are with respect to other people. Because what you think you are in your mind with respect to other people is nothing because they know nothing about that. But they know about your actions. And they will recognize you through your actions. So that's Karma Yoga and 6 o'clock. Wow, <laughs> you're good. Okay. <laughs> and see you tomorrow. Okay. That's one question? Yeah. Uh, I heard that uh, the habitual panel of the brain actually more, the brain adjusts yeah. uh, physically plastic, yeah. in 28 days, is that? Uh, yeah, in, uh, no, 28 days, no, in 8 weeks more or less. Okay. So the, 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 the brain uh, uh, rewires, and this has been tested, uh, if you follow a discipline like this, because meditation is not just sitting there and breathing a little bit or doing right. that. Exactly. Meditation is, a, is meditation and spiritual practices. Is the whole thing. If you do the whole thing, works. If not, you can meditate for right. lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and you will still be in the same place. Mm -hmm. Meditation can become a... Asoma, how, how do you say, like in, in 1984 in the book, Soma, you know... Like an escape. Yeah, like an escape, like, you, you know, to... Numb down. Yeah, and the spiritual practice requires... This good morning practice is in all traditions. You go to any monastery, Buddhist, Catholic, mm -hmm. they have the morning practices, the morning prayer, the Muslims, the, it's a standard... Uh, universal, essential part of the practice, which is the morning practice, and then you have the spiritual practices and right action. Well, right action is as simple as this. It's just a matter of implementing it. And the problem is that with the spiritual teachings, as I normally say, you know, we know them, we accept them, intellectually we believe in them but we don't practice them so we say don't do unto others like you don't want to do unto me no one you know and you don't practice it or we say how do you say the our father our father thy will be done so we say thy will be done and if something doesn't go as our will was expected we get angry <laughs> But we pray every Sunday and we say it, but like parrots. So, it's true. It's true. <laughs> so, you know, spiritual practices are things that you have to practice them. Yeah. And if you put them into practice, they work. If not, they don't work. So, have a nice rest of the day. <laughs> Have the Tomorrow we have paella, oh, wow. yeah. a special paella, so don't miss it. I'll bring my conscious salad for me. I'll bring a little salad. Where'd you go? So you had a nice day? I'm, pray I'm bringing more incense tomorrow. I'm opening up all my packages, see if they work. Do you hear me, Roman? Yeah, I mean that, yeah, throw that, that one out. doesn't so smell. Have you have you seen it? I mean, I, I no, it was it was brand new.